Thank you all for joining this morning. This one is going to be a fun one. Um, this goes for just about every subject, but in particular, um, it could really hit those ELA standards for writing because your students are going to be um, building characters, doing that setting. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into it. I'm going to put the sign-in sheet because I can still see people coming in into the chat one more time. So there it is again, and this is recorded for your teammates that aren't able to see it. And if you like it, if you enjoy it, um, pass it along and tell them to go check it out later. All right, so it is after 1030, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right, and one way that you can um, teach your students to do this is in little segments. So, oops, let's see, someone's trying to come in. Um, hopefully this is a teacher, um, just not in there. There we go. Right. Morning, Ms. Chavez. Morning. All right, so I'm going to go back to the screen. So this is just um, building characters in backgrounds. And let me remind you to go ahead and mute your mics because I do hear somebody's mic on. And we're going to look at, um, when you're sharing this with your students, go ahead and do it in small segments. You can use Screencastify to do that. You can use Kami. You can use um, WeVideo now that we have that available to us. And you could do screen captures and you can just start little. And I would start with um, teaching them how to move the characters first. And so you would teach them how to insert a character and if they're new to google slides of course talk about google slides and how to open that up and then simply go to an image uh, if you have bitmojis you can use your bitmojis but if you don't you can simply search the web and i just searched ghost i do put in that um, word png or transparent after it so that it doesn't have that white box behind it and when I search that, it usually gives me something that I can use. Oops. And if I pick one, um, one of these little guys, then I can insert it, and that's what it gives me. So I'm going to go in and delete him. And it usually doesn't have, like I said, the white box behind it. And that way I just have a clear picture, and I can put it on top of my background without having that in the way. And when you bring in your characters from this side, um, notice if I bring him off this way and I show my, when I go to publish my, my fully done um, slides, um, this little section will be the only thing that you see. So you won't see anything that's off the grid here, off this little uh, square right here. So I can slowly bring him in, and that is something that you'll teach your students to do. Um, and don't worry that you can't see him. That This is the only part that you'll see is what's on this paper pretty much right here. And slow, steady movements are going to create the smoothest um, transitions and into each uh, slide. So slow and steady, and the more slides that you put in there, the better. So you're going to do um, slow. So if he's a side person over here, you're going to move it, create another slide, move it. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But that is how you bring in a side picture. If you're doing something from the top, you're going to kind of do the same. And you can kind of stretch him down just a little bit so that his string comes down, things like that. So just slow, steady movements again. If he's coming in from the back, 
um, you're going to just enlarge him. So make sure that you're not enlarging from the side or the top that you grab that corner and enlarge him so that he doesn't get obscured and he stays nice and uh, steady there. Um, yeah. And just bring him bigger and that way he stays in perspective and it looks like he's getting closer just by that and you can move him a little bit further up things like that by dragging the whole picture and that's how you work on characters moving about the picture here and so from the top or bottom from the middle of the picture or from the sides and then we'll talk about backgrounds or your settings. You can talk about settings in, in your videos when you go over this with your students. Uh, these are some don'ts here. You don't wanna bring in something that's too dark or blurry because then you can't really see the setting. And also something that's already too busy. Uh, this one has a lot of bats. It already has something right here. Uh, let your students be creative whenever they're um, building their setting. Uh, let them build something on their own. You know, encourage them to be a little creative on their on their own. So maybe something that with less stuff on it uh, would be good. And another thing is when they're looking for backgrounds, make sure that they don't get something that's vertically aligned. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I picked something like this. This is a vertical picture. If I bring that in, whoops, and I'll highlight it, it's gonna smash it uh, flat like it did that picture. So instead of having that nice long looking house, it's gonna make it smash. So we can talk about those types of words, which are nice words to bring up, vertical and horizontal with your students. And that's all I have to say about um, characters and backgrounds. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to show you a finished one before I go into. So this is a finished one and this one has 40 slides. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's really not. <laughs> so you can see it finishes really quickly. So um, I didn't do a whole lot on this one. Um, I used my little bit emojis here and um, I published this to the web, which you have to do in order for you to change the speed of the slides. And, and that one is, that's it. That's all there is to that one. So we're going to go into building our own. We'll go to a new slide. And you want a nice blank slide here. And we'll take this off as well. We'll take off our themes. And like I said, the first thing you want to do is put a background or title your presentation. And we'll just call this one, like I always do, a uh, demo stop motion. So I know probably to delete it later. And uh, we'll do something spooky because that is our theme today. I love Halloween and that is my favorite holiday. So we'll do a spooky, whoops, I never spell when I'm on these meets. I really can spell, you guys. I <laughs> just, I get a little tiny bit nervous when I'm doing these meets for some reason. I don't know why. And um, let's start with um, so how about oh this one's a tough one. You guys want to help me out? Someone can speak up. Tell me which one I should pick. No, got a, I got a shy audience today. Should I do a grave graveyard? Should I do a forest? There was a really good haunted house right above 
um, that gray house. It's by this that. One? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, thanks. We'll do that one. Oh yeah, that, that's pretty creepy. I would, I would probably not ever go into that house, but I like it. All right, so we got our background, and like I said, if if I wanted to do a Bitmoji, um, if you have that extension, you could, you could look in here and you could add your Bitmojis that way. But if you don't, we can always add um, our little picture people by just searching the web. And we can put our cute little ghost. So I can't spell. <laughs> uh, ghost. And where's that cute one I had earlier? He was it's awfully cute. That, that little dude right here. Looks like he's floating. So we'll put him in here and make them a little bit smaller. And there's actually, if you go to format options, um, you can put a shadow on him. Let's see. We can make him a little more transparent. Oh, it's not really working on him. Oh, there's his shadow. Ah, oh, there we go. I like like the shadow there. Yep. So you can make him a little more realistic there. But he's gonna go here, and I'm gonna angle him just a little bit. And he's gonna start there. I'm gonna float him across the sky there, and. That's all I'm going to do for that first slide. I can bring in more characters. I can put in some more ghosts. I can put in some bats. Uh, the, all that part is up to you. And the easiest part now is just control D. And that's going to make sure you highlight the slide over here on the left. And then control D. That's going to duplicate the slide. And now all I have to do is just tiny movement and move my ghost just a little bit. Um, control D again and then tiny movement and control D and that is all. I, it's like a repetitive over and over again um, and I move in my, my ghost just by the slightest, tiniest uh, little movements. And control D. And control D. Sometimes if I go in too of a hurry, I accidentally control D my ghost. But all I have to do is control Z. And that fixes that. Control D, and you see how quickly like the slides go up, and it's not there. I did it. See, um, now I have to go over here. Control D, and if I can, if I want to check it, see how it's doing so far. I started the first slide, and then I just moved my arrows down to see how he's doing. So, so far, he hasn't moved very far. And so I just know to keep going. Yeah, I want him to go a little bit further up in the sky. It goes. Any questions um, on anything that I've gone over so far? I haven't checked my chat over here. Um, wow, no. We're doing good. Okay. We'll go back over here. Oops. I've done this with as young as I think third grade. I haven't and I think I worked with some kindergartens like one on one and we were able to do a little bit. So I would say 
probably second and first grade would be able to do it. But with those kinders, it's going to be really difficult unless you're like working with them one on one, but they could do it. <laughs> um, Anita, what were the commands again that you're using? So I click on this slide on the left and then just control D and then I just move my little character. So it's really not, whoops, control D just duplicates. If I'm still clicked on my ghost, that's why you can see it just duplicated my ghost. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned control Z. What does that do? Does it undo it? It undoes, yeah. So control okay. Z, just if I make a mistake, I can just undo with my control Z. And so um, the bigger movements I make, like in my other slides, I didn't, I did it real quick. So that's why it's kind of choppier. But it, the smaller movements and the more slides I make, the smoother it's going to look. And that's going to depend on like what I changed my numbers to. And I'll have to show you that um, when I finish. And I really want to. So if you have a character that you want to come in from the right hand side, you would have already <clears throat> done a search and put them on the right hand side and move them along with the ghost. Yeah. So if I have another character, I'm just going to put him on the other side. I'm gonna flip him. Where's my rotate? So he's coming in as well. Oops. And I gotta fix his shadow because his shadow's from the other side. There we go. Um, so he's going to come in from this side. Uh, yeah. So, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. So you can bring in, yeah, as many characters, and then you can bring them in later like this, and they can all start flying around whenever you want them to. Um, later before after um it's up to you um you can have other stuff pop in and out like real quick so kind of like like little sparks or just you know spooky stuff like you know like flashes or whatever you can always have that come in like real quick like in the window like um for just a few seconds and it would just show up just randomly so things like that could happen in your in your film <laughs> your stop motion film uh, so it would just depend on what you would want to happen in your film so if I start bringing this guy in um, I can do that as well and then I would have to keep track of two characters though um, when I move these so just one and then do this one and then I'm going to start making bigger movements just so I can get done just a little bit closer. Well, now he's got a little friend. So thank you for uh, talking about two characters here. Whoops. and kind of mimicking my other story that I made. Um, but, you know, it's, it's life, right? You know, got to meet up with our friends, even our ghostly friends and zombie friends. And I've had, I've had some students make some pretty creative stories. I uh, and the, it seems like the higher grade that I worked with, the more elaborate and, and fun that the kids got with their stories. 
you can have them, I guess, go in as in depth as you want them to. If you want them to create a narrative on the side to go with it, that's up to you as a teacher. If you want them to just, you know, really focus on uh, the illustrative part of it, as long as they are developing, you know, the, what is the character's purpose, if they're able to convey that through the illustration, that would probably be enough for me as a, as a second grade teacher, you know, that would have been like, wow, <laughs> they were able to do that through the illustration. That's pretty neat. So here's my little ghostly friends. They made it to each other. Oh, cute. Here we go. All right, so this one only took 37 sides. Not too bad. I kind of started getting a little anxious there at the end and making bigger movements. So let's um, say that I am finished with this production and there's nothing else I wanted to do. Uh, like I said, I can go back over and kind of just review it before I publish it just to kind of see what it looks like. And it looks pretty good. Uh, I could add a few more slides in there and make a few more movements. Um, like I said, I could throw in a few little bats in there. I could put in some other stuff going on here at the bottom. That's all up to me. So when you're finished, you go to File. And you go to this part right here. It says Publish to the Web. And you can change this, but we're going to change it anyways, because even if I put it on every second, it's still too slow for what I want it to do. And I can have it start as soon as the player loads. Um, I can have it restart if I want it to, but on this one, I'm not going to. The one I showed you earlier, I did have that just kind of play on a loop, but I'm just going to do it just this once, just so you can see. And it says, yes, are you sure I want to publish it? So I'm going to grab this link and copy it. And I'm going to put it in here, but I'm not going to say go yet. Notice right here where this number is. Um, I'm going to change that. So if I play it like it is, it's pretty slow. So I'm going to go back up to that number for a thousand, and I want to change it right here. It depends on how many slides I have. If I have a lot of slides, then I want to decrease my number um, so that it goes faster. So I'm going to try 250, and sometimes this is kind of just a a hit and miss. Sometimes you have to make this number really small. Sometimes you have to make it bigger, if that makes sense. Um, like I said, it depends on how many slides you get. So really on teaching this part to your students, you just kind of have to say, um, try different numbers. And um, you can enter it. And so this is 250. 250 is not too bad. So you can see that it works. And um, I can try a different number, and I could say 100. Oops, I put 2,000. And enter. And it's a little slower. Yeah, it's not, but it's not too bad either. So um, I'm going to say 220 and enter. So I think I, I kind of liked the two, 250, but it was a little too fast. So how about 240? And, all right. So there's that. Notice if I go like really out there by say, I don't know, 100. Oops. A little faster. So the smaller the number, faster it went. Um, 
and it it's done. <laughs> so if I want a really long story, if I want it to last a little bit longer, I'm really going to have to drag out those slides, really extend that story, and um, take my time in moving those those characters very slowly and maybe adding more characters, things like that into that. But it does take um, to do that kind of longer story. It's going to take some time. Uh, of course, your kids may enjoy that. I, I did work with um, Miss Peacock's class last year, I believe. And one of those kids took the entire class time to build his story, and he was so into it. But by the time we finished the class hour, he had built his story and he was really excited and uh, Ms. Peacock was like, oh my gosh, this kid never does anything. He actually finished an assignment within the class hour and was just really excited that he was um, that engaged and excited about doing something, doing work. And I was like, yeah, it has, it, it tends to grab some kids' attention. And I have a, I have a friend who does illustrations and with a lot of publishers wanting um, their work through digital, like they want it digitized. I think this is a great way to engage the students in something like that because um, because the way they are wanting their their illustrations to be published, and uh, this is a great way to get, to get them interested in um, that kind of work. So, uh, yeah. All right. Any questions on? How to, whoops, wrong link. Oh, yes, questions. Link for sign up. Let me put that in here one more time. Oops, that's not the link. I have to go back to here and give that to you. Thank you, Ms. Verbal. Yes, it is really cute. It's really fun to. Um, like I said, some of the kids can come up with some really creative stories through um, just um, illustration and animation. So uh, let me see how I'm getting them to move around. Um, so it is just through just small, tiny movements through each slide. So you get a slide and just move it just a tiny bit. Let me see, can I put a blank Google slide in Pear Deck and have my first graders make it? Uh, Ms. Harris, I think that might work with the younger the kids are. So maybe starting them to build just that first slide with them, maybe your background and just putting in um, a character. So if you just, uh, I just put this one, um, teaching them how to build a background and teaching them how to insert a character. I think that would just be a really good start. And then just kind of like, okay, we're gonna stop right there. And then maybe the next day come back and say, okay, we're going to duplicate the slide today and then just teach them how to duplicate the slide. And then um, after they duplicate the slide, we're gonna, okay, we're gonna learn how to move the character and then we'll learn how to move the character. And then, okay, remember how we duplicated the slide? We're gonna duplicate the slide again. So we'll go back to this one. And then you can talk about how to, uh, move the little character each time. So that would probably be the best way to do it with like those really young students. And that way they're not so overwhelmed with each step and just um, working with them little by, by little. What if you wanted a character come to come from the top or the bottom? Um, so like, like this one, right? Right here, this one's coming in from the top. So it, it would be the same, essentially. Like this one is just my little spider here. Oops, I squished him. Let me undo that. I added a string to this guy. So 
you can see I'm just going to move the string and then I would just simply bring him down just a little bit at a time and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. Um, so the, this character, he's coming in from further back. So I would start him off small, kind of like you would in a painting. Um, he would come in small. And from the top, let's see if it's not like that. If um, I don't know what we could bring in. Um, bring in a bat. A bat. Okay. Thank bat. you. <laughs> so we got. Uh, let's find a cute bat. I like this guy. He's smiling. <laughs> So you could bring him um, off the page, and when he's off the page, you'll only see like a little part of him in that first slide. Um, you could also flip him. Whoops. I think if I could grab this right here, and so that he's flying in upside down, and and you'll only see like this little part of him, and then the next slide. So we'll duplicate that one. We'll just bring him in a little further. You'll duplicate it again, bringing him in a little bit more. And so you'll just keep dragging him further down into the page until you're he's inside the page. When you duplicate that, are you putting are you just hitting that slide again? Yes. So I go uh, oops, where am I? <laughs> so I go to this uh, left side right here and make sure, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but if I high, if I click it, it barely highlights it like a little bit darker orange. Um, and I then, see that. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. So then I duplicate it. That's when I can duplicate it like that. You can duplicate it from up here. Um, there's a way to do it up here. So right here, duplicate. But it's easier just on your keyboard, Control D, if you can remember that uh, shortcut, it's a lot easier. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so that's how you get from the side. Like I said, this guy, if I were to bring him in, so I'm going to copy him and put him in this one. Oops, come here, little guy. So if I were to bring him in and then start making him bigger, You can kind of see it looks like he's starting to, to walk forward. Like he's coming And out. as you're working on these, can you kind of test it before publishing? Yeah, oops. In other words, see what you're doing. Yeah, so right here on the side, I just use my down arrow just to kind of see what, of course, I only have five slides there. So, yeah, before I go ahead and publish, I'm like, uh, yeah, he's looking pretty good. I, I went too big here, so I can go back and say, oh, I need another slide right here, and I need to make them just a little bit bigger right here because I went too big right here between these two. So I can check it and go back and forth like yeah he needs to go back a little bit here so that would help me out before I go ahead and publish it how are you how are you doing testing it how are you looking at it um just with the with my down my like arrows so I go back and forth between it like okay he's I made oh, it on your the down arrows on the computer on the keyboard, keyboard yeah okay I'm like oh he's, he's too big I can yeah, I need another slide right here. And so then I could stick in another slide, duplicate this one, 
and then adjust that one right there just like that so then I can check it again and just kind of okay that looks better <laughs> I can always use, if you have like the little rotator thing on your mouse, you can also like use that, but it's easier with the, I think it's easier with the, it's on the keyboard. Are we able to use a GIF? Um, I have not used a GIF in my stop motion. I don't know that it would do the same. <laughs> um that i would want it to but we can we can try it um let's see i want a transparent bat how about you all right let's get you and let's put a little bat somewhere in here Let's put them in at the beginning and insert. So maybe he's just there somewhere flying around. I like it. Let's uh, publish that again. I wonder if I have to publish it again. There it is. It is published. Okay, let's see if it's. Hold on. Yeah. So, yes, there it is. <laughs> um, I got to push play. And I have to change my number again because that one's really slow. my back go oh because it was only in that one that first slide so i'd have to put it into all of my slides um if i wanted that gift to keep going and i think i changed my settings when i put when i published it on this one yeah so i didn't put this i didn't put start slides and yeah so he would have to be in every slide um, so I could just, I would have to start, put my gifts in, and then duplicate so that he's there in all my slides. So I didn't have to, like, keep copy-pasting him into all of my slides. That would probably be, like, the best thing um, so that he's there. My little gif is there. So, yes, um, the gifts do work, and that's kind of cool to do. <laughs> All right, any other questions? No, if not, you just learned how to create a stop motion animation using Google Slides. Um, I hope you use this next week um, during Halloween. It is in the end of the nine weeks, so let your kids have a little bit of fun in creating a stop motion animation. Uh, make it, they, you know, Halloween theme if you want to if not you can you can always do something else but I know some kids can't so uh, I hope you have a fantastic afternoon I have another session this afternoon and it is over Flipgrid another fun um, 
way to get kids engaged. And all right. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Anita, will you stay on and let me ask you a question in just a minute? Yes, ma'am. I'm here for a little bit. Okay. So, Anita, can I build that in Pear Deck, or would I have to have them open their own little Google Slides every time? Oh, they would probably have to build their own. Uh, in Google Better. Slides? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You have uh -huh. a good one. That was awesome. All right. Thanks.